Welcome to Hey Coach Tony, the top broadcast of youth sports, where you get to call in and give your opinion. Call 855-HEY-COACH. That's 855-439-2622. Give your opinion. And now here's your host, Tony Fiorino. Hey, happy Saturday, everybody. Good morning and welcome to Hey Coach Tony. Tell you what, we're going to start things off kind of interesting this morning. First caller at 855-HEY-COACH. You can recognize the opening music. It's a Hey Coach Tony mug. <laughs> hey, I'm your host, Tony Fiorino. Every Saturday here on Hey Coach Tony, as you know, we hit the hottest topics in youth sports. And whether you're listening online or in the car, we always want to hear what you have to say. So we've opened up the studio lines at 855-HEY-COACH. That's 855-439-2622. You know, this week I want to address something that uh, one of our callers asked me about last week. Let's face it. Even though we all know the odds um, are against our kids getting uh, college scholarships, some of them do indeed have that potential. So the question that a lot of us parents are asking these days is this. How do I get my kid on the radar screen of college scouts and coaches? Well, over the past, I guess, five to ten years is when this has started to become more mainstream. There's been a dramatic increase in the amount of uh, companies that are offering services to help you do just that. Well, this morning we're going to examine the current landscape of college recruiting and some of the various tactics that you can employ to get your kid the right exposure. So joining me in studio this morning is a gentleman by the name of Chris Kevins. Chris is the founder of Recruit Coach. It's a recruiting service for student athletes nationwide as well as up in Canada. I am told that Recruit Coach has, I guess, to date, secured over one and a half million dollars in scholarships and grants. Uh, and I think that's just over the last two years, right, Chris? It is, Tony. Thank you. That's pretty impressive stuff. Recruit Coach also produces highlight videos. They hold seminars for high schools and booster clubs throughout the tri-state area. Uh, they're highlighting the entire recruiting process and the best way to navigate through it. Now, recently, I also heard that uh, Recruit Coach joined forces with Upper Hand Promotions of San Antonio, Texas, and together uh, they are right now the powerhouse. They're considered the fastest-growing recruiting company in the entire country. Again, Chris Kevins is joining me. Chris, thanks for uh, for coming in to Hey Coach Tony this morning. How are we doing? Thanks for having me, Tony. It's uh, it's great to be here, and, and this is something that is near and dear to my heart. And, uh, you know, like you just said, that this new relationship with Upper Hand uh, I think is really going to take us to the next level. And, and, and there's some things we do that I think set us apart, and uh, I think it will be a real advantage to student-athletes and their families. And we are going to dig into all that. 855-HEY-COACH is the number if you want to ask Chris any questions about the recruiting process or if you want to respond to anything that uh, I might stumble on and say wrong during this process. But I will tell you this. Uh, before we get into the, the phone calls and the emails, t- tell me a little bit about, first of all, how you started this, why you got into it, and a little bit about what this service really is. Because i got to tell you, I'm still a little in the dark about what this stuff really means. Well, you know, it's interesting. I had an opportunity, um, you know, even how I met you, and a mutual friend, uh, Andrew Ryan, was one of my uh, collegiate teammates. Uh, I had the great fortune of playing football in high school for my dad at Mayapak High School in New York. And, uh, you know, personally lived through the recruiting process and uh you know since playing at Hofstra and and going through the experience personally and now coaching for over 20 years at the high school level in New York uh, you know I've lived it personally and I've seen it as a coach and had the experience of working with kids their families and college coaches and uh you know a, a number of years ago I, I'd have people come up to me and and ask me hey you went through the the process uh, how did it work for you how did a, a 5'8 155 pound quarterback get to play at a place like Hofstra and and uh it's because people believed uh in me and and I certainly was um, given some benefits, but having played for my dad and uh, his knowledge of the intricacies of recruiting and, and how to best position uh, prospects at the college level. Um, so, you know, I had some folks asking me, hey, can you help out? And I started out just uh, helping people on the side. And, I, you know, it became obvious to me that there was a, a larger need and demand and, and there maybe was a business opportunity here. And it blossomed from there. In the last two years, as I said, uh, you know, it, it's progressively grown. I had the opportunity in the last uh, six months through a mutual friend of ours, Dan Picca, uh, to meet some great folks down in San Antonio, Texas at Upper Hand Promotions. Uh, we have a platform that is interactive for prospects prospects to find colleges and vice versa for colleges to find prospects. So, you know, we talked about this. You know, I look at it as a, as a real business proposition, and, and this is about creating demand. It's about uh, 
product management and brand management. It just happens to be that this product and this brand is really is the prospect. <laughs> and it, yeah, it, it's the student athlete. Now, how do people get more information about what you do? What's your, what's your website? Uh, right now, you can go to upperhandpromotions.com. You can also reach me uh, by Gmail at recruit, uh, recruitcoach at gmail.com. Excellent. Um, and, and those are two great ways to reach us, JJ Wyrock, Dan, uh, Ronnie Bodegauer, and myself. So, so there's a whole team of guys that are out there promoting and advocating for these kids. Absolutely. Absolutely, nationwide, and, and I have prospects right now. Uh, Gasper Spare, who I, I stare, who I work with uh, out of Ottawa, Canada, Hawaii. So it, it's been a pretty neat experience. Because there are way too many. I, I do happen to know there are a lot of folks who do this, you know, out of their basement as mom and pops, you know, as one person shops. And, and I got to tell you, I think in a business like this, there's clearly some need for some scale. Now, I will tell you, I got a couple of really interesting messages up on the Facebook page this week. Uh, the Facebook page, by the way, is www.heycoachtony.com. <clears throat> I want to get into some of these because a lot of people had questions. This one actually comes to us from Jim in Stanford, and he, uh, he wrote up and said, Hey, Coach Tony, I don't have a strong sports background, and I've never coached my kids. How do I know if my child really is a college prospect or what level he should expect to play at? That, I think that's a, that's a great one. I mean, too many of us have, I guess – uh, mis misconceptions about our kids in the other end. You know, my kid's going to play shortstop for the Yankees. Um, here's someone who doesn't have a sports background, mm. and you know, how do you how do you gauge how far your kid can go in sports? Well, you know, it's interesting if you look at the statistics. It's, there's about 7.5 to 8 million uh, student athletes at the prep ranks in high school, and uh, you know that's a staggering number. They're playing interscholastic sports, and you know the reality is, a little over one percent of those kids. Are become college athletes at all, and if you go to any uh, field locally here on a Saturday or a, or a you know a weeknight after six o'clock, I think if you polled half the parents on any youth team or travel team, they'll tell you that their kid is a future college player. Sure. The reality is that's not the case. Um, but what I would tell you is early on, if, if you see that the, your child has an interest, they may not necessarily be the best kid on the team, and that's what I tell people. People mature, uh, kids mature at different <laughs> rates, and. Uh, you know, th there's kids. I, I played with uh, someone in high school who wound up starting one or two games, and he wound up being an All-American at Marshall. Now, he had to go the junior college route, and he was a late bloomer. Um, so I think the most important thing is the kids have fun, is their interest. But I think asking their coaches, what do you think? Mm -hmm. Where do you think my kid could play? Uh, that's where you start. And I think, you know, there's, there's a really a, a very delicate balance that could easily tip to an imbalance between the parents, the coaches, and the kids in this recruiting process. And by the way, let's throw a fourth leg onto that stool. And now we're talking about folks who, I mean, let's face it, you're here for a reason. Um, I like what you guys do. But there are folks who will c collect a check and make a bunch of empty promises about where they can get someone's kid into school. And these guys are not paid on their performance. They get a you know, retainer up front, and here's the nice highlight video. There's, there's a, lot, a lot of moving parts here. Um, you know, here's, this is one that I actually I wanted to ask, but, but Mickey from, from Southbury uh, wrote in, and he said, Hey, Coach Tony, what is the NCAA Clearinghouse? When should kids apply and how? Okay. You know, that's a great question. And, uh, you know, you and I talked about this briefly earlier, but, you know, it, it's great to determine that, uh, you know, you think your kid may be a college prospect, but the reality is they have to meet minimum uh, requirements academically, NCAA guidelines. And the NCAA clearinghouse is just that. It's a clearinghouse uh, that determines if the person meets minimum academic requirements in terms of core courses and GPA. So this has nothing to do with what they're doing on the field. This is just a, a minimum barrier to entry to, if you want to go apply to a Division One or Division One AA school, you need this, and guess what? You may or may not have it. If, if you don't, um, the it then becomes kind of a... a uh, a Venn diagram of then you're going to, you know, the prep route, the JUCO route, but, you know, there are minimum cutoff points. And if you don't have those, it doesn't matter how talented you are. I've had kids that uh, had offers to some of the top programs in the country, weren't able to do that because they didn't meet the minimum requirements of the clearinghouse. Uh, you asked, when is, uh, when is it ideal? As early as possible. How do you do it? Uh, at the latest, I tell people, before entering junior year. So you're starting out just as a checklist as a parent. I think absolutely you go to your guidance uh, department. You go to your athletic director. Those are the two places you could go as a parent in school. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, you apply for the clearinghouse through their office, the NCAA office in Indiana, in Indianapolis. 
uh, in particular. And uh, but every athletic director should have that information. If they don't, the guidance counselor. And, you know, it's interesting. I say every athletic director should. Should. <laughs> uh, that's something we can talk about because that isn't necessarily the case. And uh, you know, as I deal with schools all over the country, the uh, while well, you would think the onus would be on the coach and the athletic administration and guidance to help uh, shepherd you through the process, uh, frankly, I, I've come across folks who don't feel that is their responsibility. Uh, you know, they get paid to do a job, and in that job description, it doesn't necessarily say get your kid a college scholarship. Well, forget about a scholarship. We're talking about this is this is now a question of eligibility. Absolutely, I've got to tell you, if there's an AD that's skirting whether or not a kid should be eligible once they leave their building and enter somebody else's, I, that, that's that's falling down miserably, in my opinion. Eight five five Hey Coach is the is the studio line. That's eight five five four three nine two six two two. You know, what? I, I'm hearing a lot about kids who who don't land their dream school right out of right out of high school. And you mentioned JUCO prep school. Uh, JUCO is junior college, for those of you who don't know. And I, but I will tell you, I'm hearing more and more about prep school. And, again, my kids are still younger. My, my oldest is just a freshman in high school. I know what a JC is, and I know that there are some merits to going to a junior college. And I think you kind of alluded to one before with one of your prospects. But please tell our listeners, well, walk through what a junior college is and why you do it. But more importantly, if nothing else for me, Walk us through what exactly a prep school is and how that fits into that equation. Okay. Uh, junior college traditionally has been a route for someone who doesn't meet the minimum NCA guidelines academically. Uh, it also could be someone who feels um, that they have the ability to play at a higher level but still need some refinement, uh, maybe haven't filled out yet uh, if it's, uh, you know, uh, a sport like basketball needs to work, has gotten some feedback from coaches and working on, you know, maybe the uh, uh, the mid-range jumper and, and putting on 20 pounds, whatever different things are. And it's uh, used as an opportunity for the person to mature uh, academically mm -hmm. and performance-wise. Uh, what has happened in recent years is there's been a, a real growth in the uh, pipeline to prep schools. And uh, a prep school is a post-grad year. Um, that doesn't count against your eligibility. Now, that's interesting because the junior college, when you go to a junior college, uh, when you graduate from that junior college, you don't have the same amount of eligibility you would have entering as a freshman out of high school. With a prep school, you go for a post-grad year. It's one year after you graduate from high school. When you graduate from that post-grad year, you come out still with four years of eligibility. So you're basically a freshman. <clears throat> you're a freshman. So it's, 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 like a, it's like a red shirt year on steroids, kind of. Absolutely. And I don't it, mean to use steroids. I wanna, this is a good one. I want to continue this. We're going to have to go to a quick break. But before we do, um, it is time for our Hey Coach Tony Team of the Week, which is brought to you this week by our friends at College Nannies and Tutors of Darien, Connecticut. At College Nannies and Tutors, they build stronger families by creating happy children and successful students. Whether it's role model care that comes from their college nannies or the one-on-one -on -one attention from their college tutors, they're committed to helping you build a stronger family. We all want the best for our children, so call College Nannies and Tutors of Darien at 203-987-3343. Now, this week's Team of the Week is actually a program of the week. Uh, it seems that both the girls and the boys lacrosse programs at Darien High School have both been performing at peak levels this season, so we wanted to congratulate the whole lacrosse program. For the girls, uh, the captains this year are Bryn Gasparino, Emily Tropsa, and Cami Kirby. Jenna Fritz, who is a junior attack, happens to be the team's leading scorer this year. So the girls so far are 4-1. The only loss came to Long Island Powerhouse Garden City just this past Monday. Uh, they play another great Long Island team, uh, Manhasset, actually, uh, today. And Wilton and Greenwich next week. So they got a pretty busy week ahead of them. Coach Lisa Lindley has been at Darien for 18 seasons. And during that time, she has had, get this, 30 All-Americans and several girls who have gone on to play Division One college lacrosse. Pretty impressive. Now, the boys, on the flip side of that coin, they're currently undefeated. Uh, my understanding is they are 7-0. and They uh, just played a, a big Battle of the Sound game Thursday night. Uh, rolling over Manhasset, who the girls are playing today. I think they rolled them 10-7. to 7. Uh, Worth mentioning, we also want to say congratulations to, uh, to Case Mathias uh, on becoming the all-time scoring leader in Darien High School lacrosse history. Pretty good job. It might be Mathis, so if I'm butchering a kid, I'm sorry. Anyway, Coach Jeff Braymeyer 
Equally proud of the boys' program, and they've had their share of accolades as well, sporting at least one All-American each year dating back to 1997. Uh, and last year, seven first-team All-Staters and four second-team selections. Looks like one amazing season for the blue wave of Darien High School. We want to congratulate uh, the boys and the girls' programs on uh, making the, high, uh, the Hey Coach Tony Team of the Week. Chris is frantically taking notes, drooling about these lacrosse players. Uh, we want to remind you again that the Team of the Week Brought to you by our friends at College Nannies and Tutors of Darien, Connecticut. Uh, building stronger families by creating happier children and successful students. Call them at 203-987-3343. Uh, College Nannies and Tutors is the nation's most complete resource for customized nanny and tutoring services. With strong, dedicated local ownership, they have the passion and the means to provide a nanny or tutor precisely targeted to your family's needs. Through their role model care, they offer a complete set of child care solutions from parents' night out to full-time caregivers. And their tutors help students reach their full potential through one-on-one -on -one mentoring. Individual attention is the best way for students to make progress. While they believe in proven approaches to teaching, the most important thing on their minds is how each student is going to succeed. Each student is special and unique, so call College Nannies and Tutors, 203-987-3343. If you want to nominate someone for the Hey Coach Tony Athlete of the Week, just shoot me an email at heycoachtony at gmail.com, or you can post it up on the Facebook page at heycoachtony.com. Stick around, folks. We're going to be right back. Coach Tony. Hey, welcome back, everybody. You're with Hey Coach Tony this and every Saturday morning. Uh, I want to remind you that you can listen live at uh, 940ESPNRadio.com. We're on the air at 940 and 1510 ESPN Radio. We're carried by iHide.com. Coach Tony is everywhere, coming soon to uh, an annoying vehicle near you. And we're joined this morning in studio by Chris Kevens, who is the founder of RecruitCoach.com, uh, clearly one of the fastest-growing recruiting services for high school athletes. Before the break, we were talking about uh, – and. Um, the, the benefits of going to a junior college uh, or, or even a prep school before you, uh, before you go to your, your, your school of choice. Chris and I were talking during the break, and I told him that <clears throat> as a baseball player, uh, the, the junior college vehicle was, was exploited by the top players. And the reason was, and I, I'm not even sure how the rules work, and maybe you can mm -hmm. help me, in baseball, if you were a top prospect, you were allowed to enter the draft your senior year of high school or your junior and senior year of college. The advent of the junior colleges allowed players to, believe it or not, get drafted eligibility-wise five times. Senior year of high school, freshman and sophomore year of JUCO, or junior and senior year of, 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 of a four-year school. So guys like Barry Bonds literally got drafted five different times. Uh, that was a very, I don't want to say it was a well-kept secret, but it was kind of something insular to, to baseball. What are the real benefits, aside from just gaining some experience, is there any other Real benefit to doing a junior college or, or, or go, you started talking about the prep school. I love the idea of basically redshirting but still having four years of eligibility. Uh, what are some of the other aspects of, of, of a benefit of doing either one of those routes? Well, I think one of the benefits that you have to look at is not every student athlete is ready for the rigors of a, uh, of a college academic schedule. And the reality is uh, at any level you still have to go to class. You still have to stay eligible. So uh, there's a social transition. Uh, being away maybe for the first time ever, mm -hmm. uh, you know, losing that support system that you have that may be very close. You could be on a different part of the country. So there are some transitional things that go on uh, that junior college and prep school allow. It's, it's almost training wheels. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe the first time you've been away from home allows you to get some study skills. Uh, it allows the the team to learn how to live independently. And uh, it gets you some exposure to what the expectations are uh, at the college level. You know, the reality is, even if you're in a Division three program, no matter what sport you play, it's a year-round commitment. Mm -hmm. and, and you're seeing at the top high school programs, you mentioned Darien before, and, and their history speaks for itself in, in lacrosse, in the tri-state. Um, you know, in the top programs, at least it's been my experience, it's a year-round commitment. Sure. And, uh, <clears throat> and, and it's the same in college. You know, it, it's as much work you know, the idea – we see the end product on Saturdays in football, uh, you know, March Madness. That's, mm -hmm. that's great for us as, as fans now. But I can tell you even 25 years ago as, as a freshman Hofstra, it, it, it was astonishing when you got there. You said, oh, my God, what did I get myself into? Th this is work. Now, you know, what no one asked this week, <clears throat> it just hit me now. The prep schools and the junior colleges, as, are either of them subject to the same – 
bylaws, for lack of a better term, uh, under the guidance of the NCAA, or is there a totally separate set of rules with regard to eligibility, uh, workload, things along those lines? Yeah, you know, there's two separate set of standards, but the the JUCO falls similarly in line. I mean, the idea with the JUCO is uh, it's the NJCAA, it's the National Junior College Athletic Association, so it's the the uh, cousin, if you will, of the NCAA, and it's the governing body. Uh, and, and they do have guidelines with respect to minimum credits taken and eligibility. Uh, prep schools, less so. You know, the prep schools is like a high school. But what I'll tell you is my experience I found is that the prep schools have a more rigorous and stringent uh, focus on – uh, academics in most cases. Uh, and, See, I and, mean, are, 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 there, are there meat shops absolute, at the prep school level? You, you know, you, you saw me nonverbal expression here. I'm smiling as I'm saying that. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, I, and this is just a personal, uh, you know, choice I make, uh, even if kids and their families say, hey, I want to go so-and-so because mm-hmm. they have a great track record of turning out. Uh, college athletes and scholarship players. You know, ultimately, it's their decision. I advise strongly against it. Really? Because i got to tell you, this is one where I look at it and say, okay, here's another great idea that someone can step in and exploit. If I know my kid is a world-class midfielder and just doesn't do well in terms of grades, you know, maybe that kid's best shot at college is getting to a prep school where they're going to let him skate. You know, I mean, and you know, well, I shouldn't say you know. Most people know I don't think that way, but I know there are people who are. You know, and and as the guy who is collecting a fee to get a kid to college, at some point, that's that's a dilemma for you. If I insist... You know, I know what my kid is. I know what he is not. He's not going to get the best grades, and he needs to go somewhere where he can fly a little below the radar with regard to his GPA. And let's hope for the best after he does a year of prep school. What I mean, what do you? You could advise against, but I mean, if someone came out that strongly and said, "This is my son's shot, and this is how we're going to get there," what do you do? You and I have bought homes, we bought cars, and they say, "Buyer beware." Uh, that's what I would advise: buyer beware. Ultimately, my customers. The parents, Mm -hmm. the prospects, the school officials who I work with at at the given schools, uh, everybody has their own agenda, and everybody has their own opinions on what's best for the student-athlete. I can only make suggestions. Uh, And, you know, the skin in the game for me is, uh, you know, with my kids Mm -hmm. and how how I work is uh, if the kids don't get at least $10,000 a year in uh, scholarships, grants, grants or aids, uh, they get 20% of the fee return to them. And, and that's my commitment that I have a little skin in the game. And, and, I, think, and I think it's unique. You know, so I, I do own that, but I, you know, it, it started out and it's not benevolent. It is a business, mm-hmm. but uh, I, I try to build strong relationships with each individual kid and their families. And I want what's best for them. I went through it. Mm-hmm. I had the benefit of my dad having had kids play on national championships at Penn State and Texas. So you know, he was an expert at recruiting before the advent of, of recruiting services. So I benefited from that. And uh, I have an opportunity to uh, to do the same thing for somebody else. Do I get paid for it? Absolutely. Why not? Um, but like I would say to you, you know, I want to see a kid. You use the example of if your son is this dynamic hotshot lacrosse player, you're going to bury him in a prep school uh, for a year. You're doing a disservice to your son because the reality is they're going to get out of that prep school and they're going to roll onto campus at Syracuse or wherever it is, Denver, and uh, and that's all well and good. And then you know what the reality is? They they're still got to take out. fifteen. They, they <laughs> still got to take fifteen credits. They still got to stay eligible, and uh, they still have to be a student first. Mm-hmm. And you and I talked, you know, I said, for me, when I meet with families and I meet with the prospects, uh, they want to talk about what level their kid is and how talented they are. And the reality is this, there's three criteria by which I judge and how I work with my families and prospects. And that is, can you get into the school? So number one, sure. is it an academic fit? Number two, is it a social fit? You're going to live there for four or five years. You're making a four or five year commitment of your life. So socially, do you fit in? And lastly is the athletics and the sport. You know, if I got a kid and I know he's a Division One football player, uh, the reality is I want him to get to a place where he's going to excel academically and be in a position to come out and pursue whatever his, his career aspirations are or at least be well-rounded to go to the next level of education. 
Secondly is, is he going to fit in? Is it going to be a positive experience in his life? Those are some really important years in your life is that 18 to 22. Look at what's happening now. Forget about Bo Ryan and and the whole idea of a kid wanting to transfer out because we don't know why that kid Utah wants to transfer. But uh, I just keep keep blanking on the kid's name. Is it Lynch, the kid from uh, from Notre Dame? Yeah, from Notre Dame. And he's going back. Homesick. Yeah, yeah, homesick. So I mean, you, you, and again, Notre Dame, tiny little campus, um, academically stringent, um, Catholic undertones. I mean, there's a whole different set of circumstances that, boy, I got to tell you, it makes you wonder if somebody really paid attention on their visit to Notre Dame. And these things are going to be facing all these kids. Listen, we, we have to go to another break. This is flying right by. We're with Chris Kevens, founder of Recruit Coach. You can find him at Recruit Coach. Actually, uh, UpperHand.com? Yeah, you can go to UpperHandPromotions.com. UpperHandPromotions.com because they're now all folded together. This thing is taken off. But before we go to break, uh, we are going to highlight another. We now have our Hey Coach Tony Athlete of the Week, which is sponsored by Pomparag Chiropractic and Holistic Center of Southbury, Connecticut. 25 years of service to Pomparag High School athletes and their families. So let me see. It's doctors Jim Prado and Brian Baker of Pomparag Chiropractic were both high school and college athletes themselves, and they specialize in treating sports injuries. They utilize the latest technologies, including instrument-assisted soft tissue release, kinesio taping, exercise rehab, and nutrition. Uh, doctors Prado and Baker provide uh, integrative and holistic health care for the entire family. So call them at 203-264-3583 or visit them on the web at www.holistic-chiro.com. Keep up to date with the relevant health-related research by following them on Facebook as well. Call Chiro- uh, Pomparag Chiropractic and Holistic Center and learn how chiropractic care can change your life. 203-264-3583 or on the web at holistic-chiro.com. Um, it was quite a week. For Connecticut high school pitchers, not one, not two, three Connecticut pitchers threw no hitters in the course of seven days. But the one that stood out, at least for me, from the rest, on April 16th, Pomparag High School senior Dave Cherry was nothing short of brilliant in his outing against Immaculate High School of Danbury. Struck out 15 guys in seven innings and were out to his no hitter. His control was impeccable. And the defense stepped it up when they needed to in, in order to preserve what is truly a once-in-a-lifetime achievement. Uh, this is something no pitcher ever forgets. So congratulations, Dave Cherry, on your no-hitter and for being named our Hey Coach Tony Athlete of the Week. I want to remind you, Athlete of the Week, sponsored by our friends at Pomparag Chiropractic and Holistic Center of Southbury, Connecticut. Uh, like I said, providing 25 years of service to Pomparag athletes and their families. Uh, again, doctors Jim Prado and Brian Baker of Pomparag Chiropractic. Both of these guys were athletes in high school and college. So they know what your kids are going through, and they specialize in treating sports-related injuries. They utilize the latest techniques. Like I said, they, uh, they were pioneers in uh, instrument-assisted soft tissue release, kinesio tra- uh, taping, exercise, rehab, and nutrition. Uh, Prado and Baker, they provide integrative and holistic health care for the whole family. So call them at 203 264 Three five eight three, or visit them on the web at holistic-chiro.com. Keep up to date with relevant health-related research by following these guys on Facebook. Call Pomparag Chiropractic and Holistic Center and learn how chiropractic care can change your life. Call them at 203-264-3583 or on the web at holistic-chiro.com. And remember, if you want to nominate someone for Athlete of the Week, Shoot me an email at heycoachtony at gmail.com or put it up on the Facebook page at heycoachtony.com. When we return, we're going to be taking your calls. You're listening to Hey Coach Tony. Stick around. I'll be right back. Coach Tony. Hey, welcome back, everybody. You're with Tony Fiorino this morning, joined in studio by Chris Kevens, founder of Recruit Coach, uh, recruitcoach.com, and uh, like you said, uh, upperhandpromotions.com, now the umbrella under which these guys operate. you got to go check out that website. It's very, very uh, comprehensive. A lot of uh, information for parents of young athletes, specifically high school age. All right, well, we're talking about the whole college recruiting process this morning, uh, the ups, the downs, the ins and outs, and I'm going to start getting your calls. In fact, I believe Mark is calling in from Westchester. Hey, Mark, uh, good morning. You're on Hey Coach Tony. How are we doing? Hey, Tony, it's Mark from, from your town. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Real quick, uh, Coach, you're doing a great job, and, and uh, Tony, as always. But the, the point, and we just went through this with our son, Taylor, who was, was a recruit, um, the point I'd like to make in terms of the PG year, which is a viable point that you brought out, Coach, 
uh, people have to understand there's two parts to that in terms of the business set, uh, segment of it. A, you can a coach can recruit a PG person, so-called, and they work out an arrangement with, with of, of very little or no cost. And then the second part, coach, is if people want to do a PG, that's at added cost. School, and we're very familiar with the schools like in Connecticut, like, you know, Green Farm and Hotchkiss and Salisbury, Avon, all those South Camp. Those those costs, so if, if your son or daughter is a midfielder or hockey player to try to go to Salisbury, um, it's, it's going to cost if they do not have a validation from someone like yourself, Chris, to help with the financial package of validation. And valid, it comes back to, is your child a potential recruit at the PG level or at the college level? And having just gone through that with our son Taylor, who was recruited all over the country, it comes down to what you said, Coach. To, to, uh, coach, it's a: is it the right fit? Is it the right validation? Is it the right level? And more importantly, the academics. Taylor got recruited to Princeton, Harvard, Dartmouth, Cornell, all those schools. If your child is not that type type of student, you can't go there. Mm-hmm. And if you're trying to, and whether it's Texas A&M or Harvard or whatever, so what, I, what I'm suggesting is two things. People need to start out early. We started out at, in ninth grade, and Coach, Tony, uh, Coach Chris, you said this. If you're not, and I'm, my point is you need to be support and guidance of something like recruitcoach.com because most coaches don't have, most parents don't have the, what's the word, roadmap of how to do this. But if you put skin in the game and you put time in the game and you get the support of someone like Tony, good things will happen, but there's not a end-all, be-all. Every coach is not waiting for your son or daughter. Point in reference, and I'll, and I'll stop off this. Uh, when Taylor was being recruited by St. John's and for soccer, and Taylor was an All-American, he had all that other stuff. Coach, the Coach Major told us two things at, 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 at the ceremony. How many people contact St. John's for recruit purposes? And the coaches all said approximately 3,000 per year. We sat back and said, how do you go through the minutia? And he says, we have our top picks in the country who we want, two top picks in the area who we want. And then, as, as Coach Chris said, Everybody has to go through the validation process of the NCAA eligibility issue. The, the clearinghouse. So, Chris, he had, you know, the clearinghouse. Mark, Mark had and, brought a bunch of points up there. And the last piece is, he said, at the end of the day, they're only going to look at approximately, you know, 40 or 50, 60 kids as it relates to potentially getting on the team. And getting on a team doesn't mean a scholarship. Coach also indicated. You don't care what it is, whether it's athletic, academic, grant, financial aid. And parents have to remember, if you spend all this money going to showcases, going to AAU travel, doing baseball and going at the end of the day, you could have twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 in. Oh, if no you're question. going to invest that kind of money, work with someone like Coach Chris, work with Recruit coach.com and get a roadmap to try to find out and get a validation of where your kid's going. Lastly, from our town, Jojo Morasco, Nicole Morales, top golfer, Amanda DaCosta, Brian Spence, these are all the, the blue chip recruits. 90% of everyone else has to work at this process just as they do to get the right fit. So I'm a believer in recruitcoach.com, but everyone needs to find the support mechanism and start early and coach i believe you need to start as early as uh freshman year sending out in uh, uh profile sheets and working with someone like yourself well That's mark that. thank you so much for the call and uh, he certainly brought up a couple of really good points chris and i saw you kind of chomping at the bit here so why don't you try to address these one at a time Mark, thanks. And that's great feedback. And, and, and Taylor obviously had the benefit of some parents who were well-versed and, and committed to uh, to this college process. But everything you said was spot on. And, uh, you know, you guys are Somers guys, and I worked a little bit with uh, with Matt Deanna. And, uh, yeah, Matt, you and know, didn't, didn't Matt go to prep school? Or did well, Matt went to prep school, and, and uh, you know, this is what people don't want to talk about from a business perspective. Mm-hmm. You know, Matt came out of mm-hmm. a, a high school and, and took a PG route. He was waiting. PG to be a, is a prep grad. Post-grad, grad, I'm post-grad, sorry, post-grad. I'm sorry. 
and uh, and Matt had some significant interest uh, from some Division One programs and uh, you know Brigham Young, uh, some others, and he went down to I believe he was either at Blair or Petty down in uh, New Jersey. Went down, had some injuries, so uh, missed almost his entire PG year. Mm-hmm. So that was the natural transition. So uh, that evolution didn't happen where folks got to see him at that next level. Mm-hmm. Now, he wound up at SUNY Cortland, which is one of the top Division three programs in the country. It's a very inexact science, but as Mark said, the best you can do as a parent is put your son and daughter in the best position to be recognized. And the validation is the clearinghouse is just that first part of validation. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I feel like, and, and not because it's me or not because it's the great folks at Upper Hand and Recruit Coach, uh, but, you know, you build relationships over years. And, uh, you know, these coaches get stuff, YouTube videos, links, sure. spam. They don't know what to make, good or bad. And uh, I just had one of my kids, Bobby Henderson. He was an all-state inside linebacker and fullback at a John Jay's Fishkill mm-hmm. in Hopewell Junction. Local Section 1 kid. Nice player. Uh, signing day, we had no offers. Uh, we get into, uh, you know, a month and a half in, uh, Colgate, great academic school, great history in 1AA football puts together, you know, they, they offer him, and uh, he winds up getting a preferred walk-on, which is something maybe we could talk about, to the University of Michigan. Mm-hmm. Last weekend, he was out for the, the Michigan spring game, and uh, he had a preferred walk-on to Michigan State. Brad Salem's the running backs coach I work with there. Now, this is a kid in Hopewell Junction. You know how football is recruited in New York, very sparsely. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's a great story, and he had his choice. Uh, he's a legitimate, legitimate Big time one double A mm-hmm. football player, but uh, in our kind of uh, if then statement of the decision tree with the family, we said if we could get him a, a preferred walk on to a top program because he was a ninety five student, okay, um, family with Michigan roots, uh, he's number thirty one on the roster next year at the University of Michigan for for a kid from Dutchess County. Hey, that's pretty you good. Know, that's a, that's a neat story. I'm as proud of that story and that kid and, and his sure. family as a kid who'd get a full ride. Sure. I mean, no, no question about it. I think <clears throat> a lot of this stuff. You know, stems from, again, people having the information. And, and like I said, we keep going back. It's upperhandpromotions.com. These guys really have their act together. Um, Mark, now, by the way, and I, I can't say his last name. But I didn't realize who was calling in. Mark's son, Taylor, I know. And he was, uh, I know at least at one point, named one of the top 40 soccer players in the country at his level. I mean, the kid was legit. And he had to still dance around these issues and, and, and make sure he found the right place for his kid. Now, he also talked about, Showcases. Now, we got a message that came in from Colleen in West Hartford, and she said, Hey, Coach Tony, my son gets invitations for showcases and camps. <clears throat> Are these legit, or is this just another way for people to dip their hands in our pockets? Um, my guess is the answer is depends on which showcase because some of them are just that some of them are money making machines uh, and some of them are legit where they are invite only and you know there's a list of who's going to be there etc so what's your take i don't know how uh, is is a showcase the enemy for a guy like you do you work closely with the guys who do the showcases tell us what a showcase really is how it affects a parent and, and what your take is on it you know, there's another case of, of buyer beware, mm-hmm. and, and showcases do have their place in the recruiting process. Um, you know, there's some interesting – there's a perfect storm going on right now across the country. In the last 10 years, the cost of a college education has nearly doubled. There's uh, 1.5 million more kids playing high school sports in 10 years, and there's only 11,000 more roster spots, mm-hmm. not scholarships. So you do the math uh, – And there's folks, you don't even have to have a business acumen. You do those numbers, you can figure out, wait, college is significantly more in in terms of expense, and particularly as a college athlete. And uh, demand is up, uh, demand is down, supply is up. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at it, it's the perfect storm. So people are are grasping with the economy being the way it is of how am I going to pay for for college and everybody it's it's like a lottery ticket Mm -hmm. you know everybody's playing the the powerball on showcases do they benefit yes i would be very cautious see who the audience is check references ask to speak to other families and alumni where they've gone maybe go to a showcase and see what it's all about before you pay for it Mm -hmm. um you know, I, I like to think that we we take a personal approach. And do, do I have kids that go to showcases? 
all the time. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I caution parents, you could be throwing money against the wind. Uh, you could spend as much as you want. It doesn't mean the kid's going to get a scholarship. So, you know, Bowling Brown, who's the quarterback here in, in Brookfield, Connecticut, uh, is – I believe one of the top 15 quarterbacks in the country, and I think his stock will rise beyond that. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's already put together, I think he's got about eight offers right now, and I, I think you'll see some uh, Big Ten offers coming shortly. And what I tell people is the best bang for your buck is if you have a school that your your child, uh, son or daughter is interested in, the best thing to do is go to the camp at the campus. Yeah. And what's happening right now, Villanova last year, I, I had a prospect, Victor DeFusco, who signed a four-year scholarship at a Mayapac with Fordham. And I'll tell you, uh, Villanova University wound up offering. Villanova last year, out of 13 players that were offered, 11 of them had been to their football camp but prior to their senior year. And you talk to most schools now, unless they see a kid at their camp, most of them will tell you, they're less inclined to offer. Does that mean they're not going to offer on the stud kid? Uh, they're going to offer. No, those kids. Those kids are going to get there. I mean, listen. When you talk about a, a true, I know. When, when if I'm sitting at you know at uh, TGI Fridays and someone wants to talk to me about a stud kid, that's one thing. Guys like you, when you say stud, you're talking about a blue chip national recruit. And those guys, they're known by the time they're sophomores, if not by the time they're in freshman or eighth grade. Hey, we're going to have to go to a quick break. When we come back. I want to talk. You, you mentioned offers. And there's a lot of misconceptions about what an offer really is. There is verbal. There is written. There's this whole myth around signing day. Um, I think you guys are going to learn a lot after we come back from break about what these things really mean, just how binding these things are. And if you are a parent of a high school age athlete, you're going to want to stick around. You're listening to Hey Coach Tony. We'll be right back. Coach Tony. Hey, welcome back, everybody. You're with Hey Coach Tony every Saturday morning, 9 a.m. Eastern. Uh, you can catch us live on the web at heycoachtony.com. Uh, the link's always there for iHi. Hey, before we get back to things here, there's something I, that I really do want to mention, and it's kind of unfortunate. Um, for the first time in my life, I unfortunately had to attend uh, the funeral of one of my coaches. And it, it, was, it was a gentleman named Bernie Havern. He was uh, one of my first baseball coaches. He was a neighborhood friend. He went from Nassau County police officer to Little League coach and actually established himself as one of the most respected college coaches in the area. Uh, He coached at Malloy College for a number of years. He really helped put that program on the map. Uh, Bernie um, recently lost his battle with cancer and um, died just over a week ago, and it it was incredibly sad. Um, the, the world's a darker place without Bernie Havern. He was, like I said, incredibly well respected. He was a friend, and uh, he was the kind of coach you want your kid to play for. So uh, I wouldn't feel right if I didn't at least mention Bernie uh, in the show today. Bernie, you're going to be greatly missed. We all love you, and uh, and we all miss you. Now we're joined in studio today by Chris Kevens, who is now part of the umbrella of Upper Hand Promotions, um, which is the fastest recruiting service uh, in the country. If you have. An accomplished young athlete in your family, you'll, want to go, you're going to want to go to upperhandpromotions.com and learn more about these guys. But before the break, I alluded to the fact that the word offer is being thrown around. And quite frankly, it's being thrown around rather loosely. And I think uh, it's time for a, a little bit of a glass of cold water in the face of us parents everywhere. We're going to talk about what an offer really means because, let's face it, until National Signing Day, Colleges are recruiting kids. Colleges are doing what they can to to get kids to commit verbally to their programs. And I got to tell you, I was personally under the impression um, that it worked this way: that if a school committed to me verbally, that was binding. I, as the I, as the student athlete, could change my mind. But once the school made that verbal commitment to me, whether I was in a junior. In eighth grade or an embryo, if they committed, they were on the hook, and I was not. We were talking during the break, and it's it's not quite that cut and dry, is it, Chris? No, it's not. And, uh, you know, that's the elephant in the living room that people don't want to talk about and will will turn a blind eye to, but uh, it goes on more than you think. Uh, A verbal offer is just that. It is non-binding on the institution, and it's non-binding on the prospect. Uh, So what's the point of it? (laughs) What's the point of it? The point of it is... Is it just a courting process? It's just a courting process. I like you. You like me. 
We agree that we like each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, until the national signing date, till a national, till the ink is dry mm-hmm. on a national letter of intent, which is a formal process. They'll overnight it. They'll send all the documents, mm-hmm. witnessed, signed, sealed, sent back. Uh, it's faxed back to the football office and athletic door office, uh, baseball office, whatever it is. But it's faxed back to the uh, to the athletic director's office, no matter what the sport is, and it's time stamped. It's time sensitive because you can't sign until midnight uh, of the uh, f- the first second of the signing date after midnight. And, uh, you know, the reality is it's not binding until signing day. And then as we've seen with uh, with Jared Utoff and, and Mr. Lynch, there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes on where kids change their minds, schools change their minds. In Section 1 in Westchester, uh, Stepanak. Caleb Gilligan-Evans, two of my players, former players at Bronxville, the Conway Twins. All these guys are all-state players. There's a change in the coaching staff at Yale. Sure. The guys come down for Harvard, and they uh, say, well, listen, you know, we're a new staff, and you maybe don't fit what we're doing exactly. We can't tell you – now, this is different because it's not a full scholarship offer – that you can't come to Yale, mm-hmm. but we wouldn't have recruited you. And, uh, well, now, by the way, that does – and by the way, that works also. There's a kid, and I, I may touch on this later. There was a kid, you know, h- highly recruited kid, offered a full ride, I believe it was to Utah, mm-hmm. basketball player. You may have heard this one. The kid was tall enough, had another massive growth spurt his senior year, injury-laden senior year. They cannot, because he signed his letter, they mm-hmm. cannot revoke his scholarship. But they are trying to get the kid, and he probably will because who wants to play where you're not wanted? But they're trying to basically convince this kid, please relinquish your scholarship. Well, Caleb decided not to go to Yale, and uh, and he signed with Bryant, and it's going to be a great place for him. He'll have a great college career. So you know the reality is, Tony, and Mark touched on it before, and, and he's put in the research. This is business, and and when I say that to parents, I say it because I'm realistic. You know, let's not sugarcoat it. Let's let's call it what it is. This is an investment that schools make. You know, Victor DeFusco is a great example. It's almost sixty thousand dollars a year that Fordham has invested in this young man, and he's worth every single penny of sure. it. But the reality is, that's a quarter of a million dollars over four years that the school has invested in this kid. Uh, he's their property now. He's Elisa DeFusco's son, and there's an emotional tug uh, there, but the reality is this is business. And, and you know, it, it, at the Division One level, if you have 80-some-odd scholarships over four years and you're signing 13 to 15 kids in a sport when you have 80-something scholarships, uh, it's all about business. Yeah, and I, you know, I, I guess the advice I would give to a parent, especially you know, this has been an eye opener for me as well. You know, I, I talked about Tammy Ray, who is uh, was uh, she's at LSU right now. Um, she was one of those highly recruited softball players in the country. Um, she was, and again, I may be butchering this because I'm not personal friends with the Ray family, but my understanding was she got a verbal commitment from LSU for a four year ride somewhere between eighth grade and her freshman year of high school. That's how good this girl was. Now. She obviously told them, yeah, I like you, you like me, let's get married, uh, but let's get married in four years. That may be the exception versus the rule, but I guess the, the, the lesson for parents is if you have that verbal commitment, I guess it, it sucks to say it. I guess the advice to the kids is tell them yes. You know I mean, tell them yes. It's, it, you know, boy, this is going to sound bad. My son is starting his, his dating career, <laughs> and the point is my, my thought is date as many kids – as many girls as you can until you decide who you really like. And as an adult, it makes sense. But as a kid, you're like, gee, that makes me look like I'm a, I'm a bad guy. Tell LSU yes. Maybe Mississippi State comes by with something better tomorrow. And there's nothing binding about your, your acceptance of LSU's verbal offer. In fact, what I'm learning now is LSU can turn around and say, guess what, Tammy? Sorry, we found a better shortstop because they can do that too. And they don't even need a better reason. No, they don't. And I gave you the example. There's a Section 1 uh, kid a couple years ago who uh, was offered by University of Buffalo, mm-hmm. Division One MAC school. Uh, and Turner Gill was the head coach, turned the program around, did a fantastic job. Turner Gill winds up getting offered the head coaching job at the University of Kansas. The new staff comes in, uh, Chip <laughs> Kelly, some of Chip Kelly's assistants at – uh, was it Cincinnati or was it Brian Kelly? Uh, the Cincinnati assistants come in and take over the program at Buffalo, and uh, sure enough, this prospect, they rescind the scholarship offer. Now, he's going on to have a great career at a Division II program, and, and good for him. Maybe it's better after all that he wound up not going there, but this is business. It's not fair all the time, and, and that's why folks have to go in with eyes open, ears open, and I tell kids, 
leave all avenues open. Absolutely. Um, because until that ink dries on that document, I'll, I'll give you the example. Uh, you know, I keep using Victor, but it was, his was such an interesting story. You know, two and a half weeks before signing date, we didn't have any offers. And, uh, you know, it wound up being an avalanche of offers at the end. And, uh, you know, thankfully that happened. But it's business, and once one hears that somebody else is, uh, you know, Mark talked earlier about validation. You'll hear the schools ask my kids, well, who else is recruiting you? Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, whether it's real or imagined, if you said, uh, you know, if it's um, Syracuse, and uh, you know that they're two regional competitors, they just happen to be in the same conference, you know, is uh, UConn and Rutgers, sure. and you tell them UConn and Rutgers uh, are offering me. Well, Syracuse doesn't want to lose the the local kids in New York, New Jersey, <clears throat> Connecticut to a uh, sure. to an out of state rival. Uh, you know, you don't ask the kids to be dishonest. Uh, but, but let me ask you a question. Now, these coaches, a lot of them are pretty buddy buddy. Have you ever experienced a kid who says, "Yeah, I'm being recruited by uh, by you know Joe's college," and the coach says, "Oh, that's great because Joe's a good buddy of mine." Does that kid just hose himself by yes. creating? Yeah, I mean, that's that's a tricky that's a tricky line to tell. Yeah, well, and I tell all of my kids, don't. Lie, don't fabricate. If somebody's not recruiting you, you don't tell them that somebody's recruiting. I mean, it's clearly you. a bargaining chip, right? I mean, if 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 you're if, choosing between Rutgers and UConn, that certainly that that raises the price of your stock if used correctly. Yeah, one to the other, it's got to be. Nobody, <laughs> if, like you said, who wants to? If I'm if I'm UConn, do I want to lose a kid, you know, uh, from Hartford? To go down to Jersey? Hell no. I'll, I'll give you the better example when I'm dealing with kids. Uh, you can't give me the better example. Can you believe an hour is over? <laughs> we got. I got to have you back. This was this was a great, great, uh, very informative piece. Again, it's Chris Kevens from UpperHandPromotions.com. I mean, we may even do a webinar on this stuff. If you have questions, put them up on the Facebook page or email me at HeyCoachTony at gmail.com. Another quick hour of our life, folks. Listen, enjoy the rest of the weekend. We will see you next Saturday.